Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and all our social media platforms at Fino Boxing. You can follow my personal social media at Adriana underscore sports. Enjoy. A fight I'm pumped about along with many people. You and Sergei Lipinets on paper. This is scheduled to be your toughest date or your toughest fight to date. Uh, how excited are you for your matchup against the former super lightweight champion in the world? Um, I'm, I'm very excited. You, uh, as everybody knows, I've been trying to get uh, these type of fights for probably about two and a half years. And I finally uh, got uh, a guy with a name, and I'm ready to take it on and, and show the world this, the rest of this talent. Now you're really going to see the real me. So when it comes to showing the real you, what does that mean? Because we've seen you go out – and wipe out your opponents and handle business. Your last fight against Chris Van Heerden ended up in a no decision. I'm sure you weren't happy about that, but, you know, clash of heads, that happens in boxing and prize mm -hmm. fighting. But when it comes to showing the real you, what does that mean? I'm just, just showing my skill all the way around. And and like I said before, like, you guys have only seen about probably about 20% of me. Y'all just see me in there just doing me having fun and doing my thing and I'm going to continue to have fun and do my thing. But now y'all going to start seeing other little small things and be like, wow, now I see why he, uh, he's great. He's great. So are you kind of alluding, and, and I'm just guessing here that when you talk about that, you, we've only seen 20% of you that you've been able to get away with your athleticism and, and, and you're just, you know, the things that you learned in the amateurs, uh, but there's still so much more that you can show in your arsenal. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, I, I have so many tools that I haven't shown yet. And like I said, I just can't wait. And hopefully this is the fight that, you know, bring them tools out. You're a Philadelphia guy. Do fights like this, I mean, you grew up watching prize fighting and, and paying attention to the greats. But is this the kind of fight that says, okay, I'm going to prove that I'm a legitimate contender with this particular matchup. Uh, most definitely. This is the fight right here. This this is the fight that I'm, I want. I know I'm going to make a big statement on. And after I make a big statement with this, guys, it's only up and only bigger and better names after this. And that's it. It's, it's time to take, the, take it to the next level. What did you learn in your amateur career? For those that don't know, you had about 60 amateur fights. You were close to making it to the U.S. Olympic team in 2016, but you lost to one of the Russell brothers, if I'm correct, two out of three fights. So what did you learn growing up and in, in being in the amateur system? You didn't even have 100 fights. I mean, well, what people don't know is I only had, I only had a little bit of amateur fights, but it was all tournament fights. I, I fought in about probably maybe about like, probably say like five or six shows. Besides that, everything else was just tournaments and, and I started doing that like towards the like the back end of my amateur career when I was ready to like go turn pro and stuff like that. But in the amateur, you just learn about uh, you learn how to adjust. That's what I'm gonna say. That's one thing. I'm, I'm gonna say adjust is because you will fight every day for about six, five, five or six days, and you fighting five or six different people. You will fight three tall people one day straight. And then the next day you find two short people, but they southpaw, or it's like you get a mixture of everything. Or one day you you find somebody tall, one day you find somebody short. So you gotta adjust each and every day to the to the person. So that you're fighting. So I I'll, I'll say uh, adjusting and and stuff like that. So is that why, as you're five about five years into your pro career, you turned pro April 30th, 2016. You know you're approaching your five year mark. You have 26 fights. Mm -hmm. That's a good amount of fights for someone that's barely five years in. Right. Because of you being so active in the amateurs during those tournaments, is that why you wanted to be pretty active as a young professional? Um, yeah, I wanted to stay stay active and stay busy as a professional. And uh, as you know, I was knocking guys out early anyway. So I just be like, I want to get back in there next week or the next following month or something like that. And I be able to get right back in the gym. I mean, right back in the ring. And fighting, and I'm glad I had to. Uh, I'm glad I was able to do stuff like that, and look where I'm at now, and I'm in a great position. I've heard two different schools of thoughts when it comes to price fighting. One that guys should stay active and be busy over the course of, of their careers. Another one is because fights can be so physically taxing and and brutal in training camps, you know, take a lot out of you as well. 
that it's necessary to take a good amount of time off. Where do you fall in regards to that school of thought in terms of what is being active enough and what's taking enough time off that way you don't burn yourself out physically? I mean, well, as everybody know, I always stay in the gym. So like, right after my last fight, I got right back in the gym and just tried to better myself and, and, and work on different things. So I, I like to stay active. And for me, staying active is better and staying sharp and just working on little things. Even if I'm in the gym for only an hour, just working on little things and, and drills and stuff like that. Uh, I, I, to me, being active is better, even if, even if it's not fighting, just being in the gym too. So, When you were, there are certain guys that were meant to be prize fighters. The way that your build is, your mentality, your punching power, your showmanship, I feel like you were born to be a prize fighter. Uh, where did that come from? Did you want to become a prize fighter when you were a kid? I mean, was that something that you developed when you were 10, 11 years old? I mean, you know, you turned pro at 18, if I'm not, you know, if I'm correct. So mm -hmm. obviously you had a desire to get into boxing relatively early in your life. But how did this all begin? Um, well, it just started with my, my family. Uh, my dad was a professional boxer. And as everybody else know, uh, both my brothers, Derek Poo and this and Friday Quiet Storm uh, were professional boxers. And uh, they fought on Showtime, ESPN. And I, I, I got to see, like, the atmosphere and stuff like that and being around that. And the, they had the cameras and stuff around them. So, like I said, like, this is, like, being around that stuff, and it transferred to me. And now when the cameras and stuff come around, and it's just, like, normal for me. Like, it's just, like, a like a normal, heavy place for me. And I just feed off the energy. So, I guess I, you could say from my family. That's where I get it from. Well, fans are starting to come back to the arenas. To my knowledge, I don't know if fans will be in attendance at Mohegan Sun. You fought without fans in your last outing against Chris Van Heerden. Was that a little bit different? Was it strange? Was it odd? Did you not pay attention to it? Um, well, I fought without the fans twice. Um, when I fought at Brady, too. Um, but... It's it's actually not as bad as everybody see uh, think it is. It's not that bad. At the end of the day, you still in a fight, so it's you gotta fight. <laughs> mm -hmm. The only the only thing is like you just can hear like the commentators and you can hear your, your corner uh, loud and clear. But I always hear my dad from miles away, even if we in uh, have a big crowd and stuff like that. So that's the only thing I say. Just you can hear the commentators and stuff now a little more, a lot more, and that's it. Being a Philadelphia fighter, anytime I talk to a fighter from Philly, talk to Danny Garcia, Julian Williams, you know, we can go down the list. But what does it mean for you to be a Philadelphia fighter? Uh, I mean, it means everything. And you, uh, when you're from Philly, you got to put on and, uh, and continue the legacy. And, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, continue to put on for this Philly legacy uh, and my last name uh, legacy uh, and just keep pushing forward. You got to. Just keep grinding and keep pushing and, and, and be at, uh, at your all-time best. Did you look up to those guys like the J-Rocks of the world, like the Danny Garcias? Were you in the gym with them, seeing how they were kind of coming up and growing, evolving? Um, I, 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 I got Julian ready for a, a couple fights. Uh, I'm probably saying like three or four fights. I sparred with Julian, and uh, I didn't spar with uh, Danny or uh, anything, but... And, and to see those guys become world champion, that, that definitely was motivation. And now it's my turn now, and I'm, I'm probably one or two steps away from being where they was. So what did you learn from J-Rock during your sparring sessions? Not giving away any gym secrets, because I'm not a believer in that whatsoever, <laughs> but what did you take away from those sparring sessions? Um, I mean, just iron sharp iron. It's just great work. You know, uh, he helped me get better, and I helped him get better, and and that's it. As you look at Sergey Lipinets, I mean, he's a fighter that's a pressure fighter. He's a former kickboxer, former world champion, came up short, lost this title to Mikey Garcia. He's coming off with, with the draw against Castillo Clayton. But how do you assess and preview Sergey Lipinets? Um, well, at the end of the day, I let my team, uh, just let my team look at the fighters and stuff like that. I don't really watch too much of the fighter, but like you said, uh, he comes forward, and that's picture perfect for my style. Uh, he just he comes forward, he flat footed, and he going. Our our styles mesh together uh, perfectly because he gonna run right into everything. 
being the main event on Showtime Championship Boxing, you've been the main event before mm. on, you know, Showbox and stuff like that. But now this is Showtime Championship Boxing. Showtime along with, you know, PBC, you know, they're really, you know, they believe in you. And you could tell, you know, they're putting you front and center on a big show of this magnitude. So what does it mean for you to be the main event on Showtime Championship Boxing? Uh, it means a lot. And I want to thank Showtime uh PBC for having me and I definitely will be putting on a fantastic dominating punishing performance on April 10th and I can't wait uh, but it means a lot and I'm excited I can't wait to uh, uh, be the headliner uh, for this fight on April 10th and I'm just ready to show out and rock and roll man. I'm ready I can't wait. Will you show out to Jerron with your uh, ring outfit you know, <laughs> trunks and I mean, you got some style. I got to tell you, a tip, if I had a cap, I'd tip the cap to you as well. So where do you get your sense of fashion from and your ring outfits? Is that something that you design? Do the people that, you know, create the outfits for you? How does that all work out? Um, well, I, the people that do my uh, outfits and stuff, their names are My Extreme Stitch. They're from uh, Arizona. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stitch, they are uh, wonderful people. Um, I uh, appreciate them. They, you know, they, they come up with, with ideas sometimes to help me with them. Sometimes I have my own ideas and or we just mix our ideas together. And then with the colors and stuff, I ask my mom, what, like, what her favorite color or something like that or whatever color she want me to wear or, like, the time of the year. Or sometimes I just go on, like, or man or 2K and look at basketball teams and <laughs> just grab grab different colors from them and try to put them together and stuff like that. So, so it just all depends on your mood and your feeling. Yeah, yeah how are I feeling? You, you never know what colors I might wear. I, who knows? 